Charles H. Utter, more famously known as Colorado Charlie, was a trapper, guide, and prospector who ventured westward, forming close friendships with Wild Bill Hickok and crossing paths with Calamity Jane. Born around 1838 in the vicinity of Niagara Falls, New York, Charlie spent his formative years in Illinois. As a grown man, he headed west, and during the 1860s, he earned his livelihood as a trapper, prospector, and guide in Colorado. Despite his relatively small stature, standing at just five and a half feet tall, Charlie compensated with his meticulously groomed appearance. He was renowned for his dapper style, sporting long, flowing blonde hair and a perfectly maintained mustache. His wardrobe consisted of hand-tailored fringed buckskins, high-quality linen shirts, beaded moccasins, a substantial silver belt buckle, and a pair of revolvers adorned with gold, silver, and pearl accents. Charlie's living quarters were a tent adorned with luxurious California blankets, housing a mirror, combs, razors, and whisk brooms. His obsession with cleanliness set him apart, as it was an unusual trait in the mining camps and settlements of the Old West. He upheld a strict rule of not allowing anyone, including Wild Bill Hickok, to enter his tent. He was so adamant about this boundary that he even threatened to shoot anyone who breached it. Charlie's reputation as a trapper, prospector, and guide led to him being affectionately known as Colorado Charlie. During his time in Colorado, he crossed paths with a 15-year-old girl named Tilly Nash, the daughter of a local baker in Empire, Colorado. Impressed by his youthful good looks and charisma, they married in 1866. Charlie continued his endeavors in Colorado until he caught wind of the gold discoveries in the Black Hills. Convinced of the area's potential for great success, he enthusiastically described it as a real Lollapalooza. Subsequently, he and his brother Steve made arrangements to head to Deadwood. In the spring of 1876, Charlie and Steve organized a wagon train in Georgetown, Colorado, bound for South Dakota. During their journey, the wagon train passed through Cheyenne, Wyoming, where Charlie reconnected with his old friend, Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok joined the caravan, along with over 100 others, including prospectors, gamblers, and a group of working girls. Later in Fort Laramie, Calamity Jane also joined the wagon train. The precise circumstances of Charlie Utter and Wild Bill Hickok's initial meeting remain unclear, but they likely crossed paths in Kansas during the mid-1850s and maintained contact as they both traveled through Colorado. Upon the caravan's arrival in Deadwood in mid-July, Charlie and Bill had become partners within the wagon train. Charlie undertook a self-imposed responsibility to watch over Wild Bill, shielding him from his greatest adversary, himself. Acquainted with Hickok for an extended period, Charlie was well aware of how Hickok's excessive drinking and gambling habits could lead to trouble. He made efforts to keep an eye on Bill and protect him from these habits, although success in this regard was infrequent. Upon their arrival in camp, Utter initiated a mail express service between Deadwood and Cheyenne. He and his fellow riders carried letters for a fee of 25 cents each, traversing treacherous plains and mountains while often carrying over 2,000 letters at once. When the tragic day of Hickok's murder arrived on August 2, 1876, Utter was occupied with his business affairs. However, upon learning of the incident, Charlie hastily returned and claimed Hickok's body at the saloon. Soon after, he published the following notice in the Black Hills Pioneer. Died in Deadwood Black Hills on August 2, 1876, from the effects of a gunshot, J.B. Hickok, formerly of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Funeral services will be held at Charlie Utter's camp on Thursday afternoon, August 3, 1876, at 3 o'clock p.m. All are respectfully invited to attend. Hickok was laid out in a coffin, and throughout the day, people came to pay their final respects. Before Hickok's burial, Utter took a lock of his hair, which he later sent to Hickok's widow, Agnes Lake. The following day, Bill's funeral took place, and Charlie crafted a marker that bore the inscription, Wild Bill. J. B. Hickok killed by the assassin Jack McCall in Deadwood Black Hills, August 2nd, 1876. Pard, we will meet again in the happy hunting ground to part no more. Goodbye, Colorado Charlie. C. H. Utter.
Interestingly, while Hickok was being laid to rest in the plot funded by Utter, Jack McCall's murder trial unfolded at McDaniel's theater. In a farcical turn of events, McCall was declared not guilty and released. However, it was later discovered that the trial was conducted without legal authority as the Deadwood camp lacked jurisdiction. Subsequently, McCall was apprehended by U.S. Marshals, retried, and ultimately hanged in Yankton, South Dakota, on March 1, 1877. During that same year, Charlie returned to Colorado, but made his way back to Deadwood in 1879 to oversee the reinterment of Hickok's remains in Matt Moriah Cemetery. In February 1879, Utter acquired the Eve Saloon in nearby Gayville, South Dakota. However, just a month later, he faced legal trouble for selling liquor without a license and was found guilty of maintaining a dance hall that was considered a nuisance in June. Following these setbacks, he returned to Deadwood, where he lost all his belongings in the devastating fire that engulfed much of the mining camp on September 26, 1879. Subsequent to the Deadwood fire, Numerous Black Hills miners began migrating to more promising gold deposits in Colorado, Idaho, New Mexico, Texas, and South America. By February 1880, Utter had arrived in Leadville, Colorado, and was exploring various mining camps in the area. During that year, he and Tilly separated, and Charlie continued on to the Durango, Colorado region. From there, he headed to Socorro, New Mexico, where he operated a saloon and gambling establishment. While in Socorro, he was said to have fallen in love with a striking faro dealer named Minnie Fowler. Beyond New Mexico, the trail of Charlie Utter became increasingly shrouded in mystery. However, according to biographer Agnes Wright Spring, records indicate that a Mr. C.H. Utter ventured to Panama, with some accounts suggesting he practiced as a doctor and pharmacist. This narrative was supported by a friend of Utter's, Upton Lawrence, who maintained that Charlie settled in Panama around 1888. During his time there, he purportedly ran a pharmacy, offered medical services to local indigenous communities, and even assisted in delivering babies. Lawrence recalled seeing Utter for the last time, by then blind and grizzled, sitting in a rocking chair outside his pharmacy in 1910. The details surrounding Utter's final days remain a mystery.